kids and my family is falling apart and I'm trying to do the... You know how hard that would be? Thank God. Amen. And you ought to be happy too. That way I can prepare some sermons for you. Amen. I won't be one of them cussing preachers. Any preacher getting up cussing hate his house. He slip and say one in front of all y'all. You can imagine what he sound like behind closed doors. That's Cat Williams' house. Amen. So I thank God. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash. Look at somebody and say, growing up. Growing up. Amen. So because we're in the end times and um, we're approaching the end of everything. You know how I know it's the end of everything? Because the signs are visible. Amen? The earth has already sped up. We're having the shortest days in history, according to meteorologists. I mean, scientists. The shortest days. Our days are shortened because of the rotation of the earth and our trajectory toward the sun. That's why the sun is scorching hot now in certain areas. I mean, you know, you're still gonna have seasons, but the seasons are amplified yes. because of the solar minimum I told y'all about about two years ago. Remember I told y'all about the solar minimum? Well, all those things, they're seeing flares and they're saying that the flares are building up in the sun and eventually there probably will be a flare big enough to scorch the earth, which would still go with God's prophecy of destroying the earth with fire. Amen. Somebody, I thought God was going to do it. <laughs> how, did, how did God destroy mankind? With a flood. Who did that? God. It was his water. It was his what? Was it his rain? Had it rained before that? No. That was his rain. So what makes you think he's not going to use his son? Is the sun his? Man, see, I knew my nerdiness was going to pay off one day, mother, when I was tearing everything up in the house to see how it works. But now, I'm, I'm just, God is using that and my ability to science and all of that, and he's showing me how great of a scientist he is. He's got all of our scientists scratching their heads. They can't understand how the earth can speed up its rotation and time moves faster, but linear time can't record it. Oh, we're preaching here. Your watch can't even... God said that those days would be shortened so that some of us can be saved. Shortening the days. God starts shortening them and all the scientists are like, but my watch is still moving at the same time. How is time shortening it? Because God is shortening it and he does whatever he wants to do with his creation. You're not as, look at somebody say, you're not as smart as God. So I'm just amazed. I'm sitting back like, let's do it. Oh, wow. And do it however you want to, God. Amen. And when God was mad at Pharaoh, he used stuff that was on the earth. Didn't he do that? Yeah. Look at somebody and say, growing up. Growing up. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash growing up. Second Peter 1 and 5 teaches us how to be mature. Now, as time is shortening and we're having to make stands against our jobs and against family and different ones that don't want to believe 
what is true or what is really happening in this world, we have to make sure we are firmly planted. Yes. Amen? Yes. And we can't be spring chickens in the faith. Yes. That means we got to study and learn quickly. The problem is everybody's getting converted now to Gnosticism. These folks getting converted to Gnosticism and black Hebrew Israelite and all these other things because they are not sound in the faith. Anybody that can pull you out of the truth of the word and go straight up against what the Bible says and you believe it, you're not sound. You're an infant in the faith. You're not mature. Nobody should be able to change your mind, especially about what you can read for yourself. Yeah. Amen. Nobody should be able to do that. You should be sound enough to grab the Bible and say, sir, you're wrong. God loves everybody. He made everybody. Not just black people. Ah, uh, brother, but see, if, you, if you, and then they start questioning the, the origins of the Bible. See, the white man, if you know where the Bible came from, right brother, I believe this word because this word, you're in it, brother. You're in here. And it said that in the end times, you would be doing this. So you got to be sound in the faith, faith, and we have to mature quickly. Amen? And we got to get our kids matured quickly. They are trying to indoctrinate our children. Indo I mean, it's just bad. So we have to be sound in the faith. Amen? Amen? And I want to be at a church where folks are sound. Amen? I don't want to be at a church where everybody's watching the news. Y'all gonna follow the news, you can't follow the gospel. You gonna follow the news, you can't follow the truth. The news is a lie, that's the world. The news wants church to stop, to cease and desist. Why am I watching the news? Somebody sent me a clip of all of the different Christians that have come on the news that they've interviewed and showed me how they cut and edited their interviews because they have the real copies and they show what they really said and they were what they said was changed if they had Jesus a, a cross on their paraphernalia it was erased all of this stuff when it's on the news because the news is the world's and that's who you're gonna believe this is the real footage but this is the tampered footage. I'll say congratulations. How do you turn this around? Man, first off, I need uh, the first thing my Lord say to you. This thing is... The issue with sin, it, 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 it makes wow. us, our sin that's in us makes us do those things. And the only, the only salvation for this sin is the gospel. The only way to really cure that was on the inside is understanding that Jesus Christ died for our sins. And so, the, to me, on a micro level, it's understanding. It. Yep, and just like that, we lost him. I know I- Masters champion, Bubba Watson. <laughs> and in second, I gotta thank uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> this day means so much more than, than putting on this green jacket in many ways. All right, so a uh, technical glitch there from Augusta National. All right, let me read this. This is your guide to maturity. He's telling you how you should be. Peter says, and beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith. Look at somebody and say, add this to your faith. So your faith by itself will save you. But your faith has to have things added to it to keep you strong. Yeah. So that you don't denounce your faith. When they come with the sword and threaten to cut your head off. If you confess Christ, what are you going to do? You ready to stand before a firing squad. Like they're doing overseas. Like they're doing in China. Gas chamber. 
they announce over the loudspeaker to a bunch of folks in the gas chamber. Are you really ready to die for who you believe in? You're really ready to die for this Jesus Christ. And they got to give an answer. And they turn gas on. Choke them to death. You ready for that? Some of y'all couldn't handle the mandate. You couldn't handle the mandate. Oh, brother, how you doing? Elbow button. <laughs> Stay back there. And folks dying in gas chambers, guillotines, heads getting cut off for the gospel. You worried about catching a cold from somebody in your church. Foolishness. I don't care. That's why I have a church. That's why we have a church. I can preach this. And if you don't want to hear it, turn it off. Why are you listening? Man, man, man. Y'all, do y'all know we are an end times ministry for real? We up in here, the world think we wildin'. They want us to stop so bad, but can't stop us. They want us to quit so bad, but can't make us. Because this is what God needs right now. I've been telling this church since I started this church that God had called me for this time right now. Have I not been saying that? This is the time right now. Second Peter 1 and 5. So add to your faith virtue. And to virtue, add knowledge. And to knowledge, add self-control. And to self-control, add patience. There is no patience without self-control. Amen? But there's no self-control without knowledge. And there's no knowledge without virtue. The virtue causes you to get the knowledge, which causes you to temper yourself, which causes you to be patient. And to patience at godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. See, I, it goes to love. Yeah. That's, how I, that's how I know your level of maturity, how you love one another. Yeah. If you can't love people, you still a babe in the faith. If you still talking about people behind their backs, trying to find something wrong with them so you can feel better about what's wrong with you, Man. you're immature. Yeah. That's childish. That's playground sandbox stuff. Only in the playground can a kid make another kid not like somebody because of something they did to them. You can't make me not like nobody because of something that was done to you. They didn't do it to me. What am I mad at? I'm not mad for you. That's childish. We don't like him, so you shouldn't either. Sandbox. For if these things be in you and abound. So not just in you. You may have a little bit of virtue. You may have a little bit of temperance. But they have to abound. Meaning be activated constantly in you. These things be in you and abound. They make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfair fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning you are fruit bearer. When you are fruit bearer, it takes maturity. A seed can't grow of a, a fruit until it's in the ground and matures. It has to turn into a tree. And that takes time. You know how long it takes for an apple tree? To go from a seed to an apple tree? Who in here is country enough to tell me? I am a reader. About 17 years. 17 years? 17 years. It's a seed. Somebody hand you that seed and say, boy, you about to have a whole bunch of apples. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't taste, I don't taste no apples. <laughs> no, you gotta plant it. Monitor it. 
takes time to come to maturity. But once it's mature, it'll keep bearing fruit. Storm come, knock all the branches off. Springtime come, little buds happen. Bloop, 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 bloop. You know what it's going to do? It's going to make some more fruit. Because it matured and you can't stop it from making fruit. Once it matures, you can't hinder it. You can't. You can delay it a little bit. You cut it down to the stump. But if you don't burn it, it's going to grow back. And it's going to bear more fruit. That's this maturity level. So you need these things. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, kindness, brotherly kindness. Then when you're there, you get the love, the charity, and then you're fully mature. Mature. You ready for God to use you. That was just the first slide. So these are the things you have to add to your faith. I'm going to break each one down so you know. Amen. Virtue, that's just not the singing group. Don't try to just add that CD to your collection. I got the virtue. <laughs> Young folks like, who is virtue? <laughs> Wasn't that singing group called virtue? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, they were. They were. They were. They were. They were. So, <laughs> you need virtue. <laughs> you add virtue to your faith. Everything you do should exude virtue. God should be present in you enough to be seen by others. That's, right. That's virtue. That's right. Folks can see it. And folks ought to be able to partake of your virtue. Yes. You should leave it for people. Remember, Jesus wasn't even looking at folks and folks was touching him. He was like, oh! Who touched me? Who just, what did they get from it? Virtue. Enough to heal them. So the Bible said in one passage, they all lined up while he was turned around. Just, oh, 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 just taking it off. I'm sure Jesus wasn't making them sound effects. But they were taking his virtue because his, there was healing power in his virtue. Do you know there's healing power in your virtue? Sometimes it can just be the right thing. You say the right thing, you can heal somebody's life. You give them the right advice. You put them on the right path. So God should be present in you enough to be seen by others. People should know you are in the faith without you saying anything. Some of these Christians, man, you got to ask them, brother, you saved? Uh, your whole chest is out. <laughs> you need to put a shirt under that V-neck. <laughs> Brother, that ain't a V-neck. That's a U-neck. <laughs> hey, man, you're just sexy. Why you sexy, brother? You ain't exuding no virtue. Sexy. You're just sexy. And if you, if you dress yourself in the morning and look in the mirror and sexy come in your mind, change clothes. Change clothes. Change clothes. You ain't sane and sexy. The two ain't becoming one flesh. Save and sexy. No, no, no. Amen. And you're married. Now, one of y'all should have had a conversation before you walked out that house. Hey. Hey, man. I, you know, I love my wife. I ain't never got to do it. But if I had to, boy, I'm going to go buy one of them, you know, them long, uh, with the hook on the end that the, that the shepherd have? Just walking out the door. <laughs> Yeah, sad man. No, sad, yeah, sad man had one of them. Bring it back. And women, you should be protecting your husband like that, too. Yeah. Amen. Uh, brother, your pants just too tight. I can count the change in your pocket. I can read the credit card numbers. Oh, your wallet. <laughs> 
brother. Amen. I see the check stub. You got paid, huh? I see the check stub. It's too tight. Amen. Amen. And we just do those kinds of things because people should know you're in the faith when they see you. Just because. And I'm not saying you got to walk around looking like Mother Teresa. I don't even know what she looked like. That just came to my mind. How she dressed? Does she? I know she don't dress sexy. <laughs> But you know, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying you ought to be careful so that you don't look like you're seducing somebody. Right. Amen. Amen. Because God is going to charge you for being a stumbling block. Yeah. And he said in Revelations, he hates those that go after the doctrine of Balaam Amen. to cause Israel to stumble. You causing men to stumble that sin and you're going to be held accountable for it. You causing women to stumble. Amen. Making your pets dance during worship. Just to, the, to the beat we had received. And I ain't saying it because I'm jealous either. Put a shirt on that fits. Amen. Amen. You know that shirt didn't fit. Can't even breathe. Hope they don't sing nothing fast. <laughs> Philippians 4. I need to stop. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, what so I know I'm telling the truth. Folk don't like these old fashioned holiness messages. Amen. But we gotta look the part if we are a part. Amen. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report there be any what? Virtue. If there be any what? Virtue. He just described what virtue is. Yeah. The things that are true, honest. This is the way you live your life. Things that are just. Yeah. You can get extra money if you lie, but you're not going to lie because God going to bless you anyway. Why would you bring a curse for lying? You get a little ahead by you didn't lie, but I'm not going to really share the truth either. That's a lie. That's not virtue. Pulled over on the side of the road. I mean, somebody run you off the road, you shooting the finger? That's not virtue. Get mad and cuss at somebody. Oh, Lord, forgive me. No, you should be past that. You should be past that. You ought to be past that. there be any virtue or be, there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Then knowledge, reading, hearing, and understanding the word brings knowledge of God. Yes. So you have the faith to get saved. Now you got to add to that faith knowledge. Yeah. Because knowledge is what's going to mature you. He is his word and his word will teach you who he is. Hearing the preach word, trains. Look at somebody and say trains. trains. See, you in here hearing the word, it's training. It trains your mind and heart to be able to receive instructions and follow after it. If you just read the word all the time, which reading the word is good. I'm not saying don't do that. 
But I'm saying you need someone to teach you how to receive the word so that when you read it, see, I will preach against the way you live it or I'll preach against something you may have done and it'll make you real uncomfortable. But you need to get used to that because the word going to do that all day long. And you're, you can easily close the Bible up and say, well, I'm just not going to read those parts. But if you're in here, you're conditioned and trained to receive instructions and follow after it. It's the beauty of coming to church and hearing the preacher. You're getting trained to listen. Amen? You can't just jump up and leave out of here. Folk gonna have questions. Brother, I saw you shaking and convulging. And then you just left. You all right? But if it's you just reading, well, you know. Yeah. And then fellowship with like-minded believers gives you wisdom in daily life decisions. Yeah, right. Amen. Daily life decisions. Because you get to watch other people. And you get to meet people that have gone further than you. And it gives you wisdom in daily life decisions and instructions in love and family. Amen. Some of y'all, especially if you was raised by coyotes, you need somebody in here to help you with your children. You can't bite them all when you get mad. Carry them around by the back of their neck. You get over here. You get over here. Because that's how you was raised. Okay. Uh, right. It was a visual that shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have let that out in my brain, but I, when I said coyotes, I just saw that. <laughs> just. But you gotta learn, people. So, so, somebody. Somebody has to. T- Somebody has to teach you, amen. So you get to see families and how men and women handle their children and different things and you learn things in a fellowship. Colossians 1 and 10. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being what? Fruitful in every good work and what? Increasing in the knowledge of God. So you should be increasing, not decreasing. You should be increasing. And then you're going to add to knowledge self, look at somebody say self-control. Amen. A person that has no self-control stays in trouble. Amen. And quit trying to blame it on ADHD and all of that. You're crazy. Won't you quit acting crazy? Amen. No, pastor, but the sin, it just keep getting me the sin. No, you getting the sin. Oh, see, we talked about that last week. You don't have a sin problem. You have a yield problem. You haven't yielded to God. You keep doing what you want to do. You keep doing what you want to do. You're going to keep sinning. Because your flesh going to keep wanting to sin. Your flesh is so bad it can't go to heaven with you. Flesh got to stay here and rot. So if you listening to it, you going to stay here with it. Man, I'm preaching here. Knowledge teaches you how to temper yourself and why it is important to forsake sin and live for God. Important to forsake sin and what? That's what knowledge teaches you. You got to forsake sin. Immaturity says that God is stopping your fun or blocking your desires. So anybody that's trying to find a loophole in the system so that they can keep sinning, you're just not mature. Because when you mature, you learn. Why would I go back to that when that brought me nothing but pain and grief? Why would I keep doing that when that was breaking my body down? 
when I was messing with my mind, when I was messing with my money, why would I keep doing that? That's immaturity. Self-control keeps our walk straightforward and removes obstacles that sin causes. Sin is an enemy of our faith walk, so we must use self-control to do what? Defeat it. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses. Meaning all these folks went through all this stuff. You saw what happened to them. You ought to be a little smarter. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth what? So easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. And then stand fastness oh that i love that picture that picture is just awesome steadfastness self-control trains us to be stable so when you operate in self-control you operate in stability when you're not in control you're wavering but when you're in control you're stable stabilized Self-control trains us to be stable. Stability and consistency are vital as the end approaches because of the testing that is to come. Y'all didn't think there was going to be test? We just got out of one. A lot of folks failed it. Amen. A lot of churches still closed. They didn't have the faith. Added with knowledge. Added with self-control. Which created steadfastness. You see what I'm saying? They didn't have the roots. They couldn't plant themselves. And so when the testing came, they failed. Amen. Amen. To deny self and be planted in God keeps us from moving when we are challenged by our world's agenda. Being unmovable keeps us in the place where God wants us. And man cannot harm us. Amen. Amen. He said, don't fear him that can destroy the body. And that's all he can do. Your body can't go to heaven no way. But rather fear him that can destroy both soul and body. In hell. So I ain't afraid of no dude. Man can't harm us. So we must stand strong, 2 Peter 3 and 17. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Look at somebody and say, beware. Beware. Be on guard. Since you know these things before, you've seen these things before. You've been in that before. So beware. So you won't be led away with the error of the wicked. And then we have to add godliness to it. The final stage of maturation in the faith is godliness. This is when our decisions, actions, and intentions are consumed with God's desires and not our own. This is when you have shed yourself. That dream you always had, always dreamed that you would be one day. You've shed it for what God wants. Yeah. Yeah. That desire. I always wanted to have this. I always, I just always saw myself as it. Once you shed that, you've matured. Yeah. This is when our decisions, actions, and intentions are consumed with God's desires. To truly die to what we thought we wanted to be and die to who people feel we should be. That's maturity. Anybody thought they was going to be something else? And God turned it around and said, no, brother, this is what you're going to (laughs) do. This is what I've always wanted. And then once you shared what you thought and partnered with God, you love what he wanted. Amen. You only wanted the other because something happened to you and you felt you had to do that to show other folks. Yes, sir. 
when we can divorce our existence from the opinions of others and walk in the will of God, then we are godly. Not perfect, but striving for perfection while still ooh, continuing to love and have compassion for those that struggle is godliness. So can you mature and not talk about the immature ones? Because once upon a time, you were immature. That's what immature means. Immature means you haven't matured yet. But just because you've matured, you can't talk about the immature. That's maturity. You've matured when you get your mouth off the immature. Amen. Somebody don't like this, but pastor, that's all I sit around and do. Like, that's the fun in my life. Then you're immature. <laughs> so we're not perfect, but we're striving. Maturity tells us to strive for perfection. Yes. Philippians 2 and 3. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Do you know Jesus did that? He esteemed us better because he gave his life to make us live. Amen. Yes, Amen. I love my son, Johnny, but he know bullet come, I'm jumping in front of it and I'm sacrificing my life so he can live. Amen. You don't think I will? I definitely will. No, yeah, because I'm going to esteem him better than me. His life becomes more important in that moment than mine. And that's what Jesus did for all of us. The King of Kings, Lord of Lords, came down and gave his life for raggedy us. So we could live and be with him. That's maturity. You got to mature to that point. Amen. God did not give up on us when we were struggling in areas. Amen. Anybody ever struggled in an area? Amen. And God didn't give up on us. And he should have in some cases. Amen. Anybody pray, God, don't kill me? Y'all ever pray that? I prayed it till my lips turned crusty and white. Yeah! <laughs> don't kill me. Because you struggle in certain areas and you feel like you should be dead. So we cannot throw each other away and give up on one another. Amen. Praying for others instead of talking about them and forgiving those that harm us is godliness. Oh, somebody like that. Amen. Yeah, that's godliness. This leads to brotherly affection and Christian love. You ain't saved if you don't have no Christian love. You ain't saved if you don't have brotherly affection. Yeah, yeah brother, I be, hey, brother, I just need somebody to be praying for me, man. I got this thing happening. That, can you do it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll pray for you. And then you don't. Stop saying you will. Don't tell me you will. Oh, just don't say nothing. Be like, <laughs> but I can't pray for you. I don't pray for me. I don't pray for nobody. I can't pray for you. They don't want to say that, so they'd be like, oh, yeah, I got you. Yes. Mm, no, that ain't brotherly affection. Brotherly affection, they come to you and ask you for prayer? Yes, sir, I'm praying for you. I'll be praying for you. Write it down on something. Amen. I leave little voice messages. Amen. That doesn't mean we have to accept sin or evil or compromise from others either. Amen. I'm not accepting evil now. If you crazy, I'm going to deem you crazy and pray for me, for you from a distance. Amen. Everybody ain't supposed to be in your life. 
Amen. I mean, if Paul and Barnabas could split, and Paul was the man, he was like, y'all go that way. Amen. Bible said their, their, their breakup was heated. Yes. Contentious. That's the word. That's heated. Yes. They had an argument. And Paul was like, see ya. Right. And they walked right off the Bible. Just. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm rocking with Paul. I'm sorry. Right. Amen. Yeah, I'm walking with the one that was blinded on the road to Damascus. That's the one. Whole story about his conversion. We don't know Barnabas' conversion. <laughs> Are you saved? That's the question. <laughs> Amen. So everybody ain't going, no, nah, I mean, you ain't got to have folk around you trying to kill you. I'm not saying that. That doesn't mean we have to accept sin, evil, or compromise from others. But it does mean that when, that when we must deal with them, we do it biblically and not emotionally. Oh, I just preached a whole sermon right there. Oh, boy. Oh, we do it biblically and not emotionally. We see them in a fault, we go to them, us and them alone, and we don't tell nobody else. Yeah, that's biblical. Bob said, if they hear you, you've gained a friend. They're doing evil against us. We pray for them. And we don't defend ourselves. We got to do it. Look at somebody say, do it biblically. Amen. That's your mother-in-law. Do it biblically. Do you love her son? Then you got to love his mother. So you got to pray for her. Amen. You can't be drawing pentagrams under her bed. You got to pray for her. Throwing... Amen. I just hate, I just despise my mother-in-law. Why would you, that's a curse you just spoke. Ain't no Christian supposed to ever say that. Don't be telling nobody that. Oh, listen to the hand claps. I just be venting. You don't need to vent like that. You need to talk to the Lord and say, God, I need a pathway to that woman's heart because I love her son. And if I love her son, I love her. Give me the pathway. There has to be one. I'm preaching in this place today. I know I am. Yeah, how you looking at me? Good job, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yeah, love that mother, father-in-law, sister and brother. Find a way. Find a way. Look at somebody say, find a way. She's so trifling. You was trifling. You were trifling, God save you. Find a way. That's family. Amen. Amen. Now when they ain't family, you ain't gotta find a way. You gotta just away. <laughs> away with you. <laughs> but when it's family, work it. Look at somebody and say, work it out. And you work everything else out. Some on your job you don't like for that check, you work it out. Don't you work it out? I'm all the way in the house today. Yeah. Summary! I got some more to go, Elder. This ain't no regular summary. This is a test. This summary is a test. This is the maturity test. Now, this is how you know if you're, ma if you're mature. And if you're not there, get there. Look at somebody and say, get there. Get there. That's what we're talking about. That's why it's getting preached. So we can all come to maturity in the faith. Get there. Number one, are you usually ashamed of your actions afterwards and not before? That's a sign of maturity. Yeah, you always mad because you did it. But you don't ever get mad before you do it. Yeah, you're just wishing you hadn't done it, but you don't ever let the Holy Spirit tell you not to do it. Come on now. I do 
it was gonna be quiet like this. Somebody like, dang, I thought I was. <laughs> yep, <laughs> fail number one. <laughs> How many of them is it? What, what, what's my percentage? I mean, <laughs> how many more we got? There's five of them, so if you miss one, that's a 70. <laughs> you already a C, you got a C to start. Start off with a C. Pray for God to convince you during your consideration and not after you have fallen prey to it. You pray for conviction. Lord, convict me. And listen, there are things that block conviction. Music is the number one. Music was created to block conviction. The devil knows, I mean, not secular music. The devil knows he can use music to mess with your frontal lobe. Yeah, and your conviction is impaired. So you don't feel as bad about doing it once the music has played it into you. You start wondering, I mean, it ain't that bad, is it? Because you just heard it on repeat. I'm preaching in here, man. Buddy, folk in here ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready for no truth out here by rewind. You can't make it through the test. <laughs> Pray God to convict you during your consideration That's right. and not after you have fallen prey to it. Yeah. Maturing in the faith will cause you to avoid things that once defeated you. That's, right. yeah. That's maturity. Amen. Amen. Oh, I got four more to go. Number two, do you measure people with a different standard than you do for yourself? Ooh, somebody like, hey, I, I'm just out. <laughs> like jacks, I'm playing jacks, I'm out. I'm just out. Do you, do you measure people with a different standard than yourself? Immaturity makes us point fingers, blame, and even shame others without even considering our own failures and shortcomings. The older you get, Quickly, you ought to stop that, what you was about to say. Yeah, the more mature you get, you know. Well, you know. Pray for them. Yeah, when you're immature, uh-huh, uh-huh, she, and then she did this. Well, what did you do? I ain't talking about what I did. This why I went. Child. Mm. Childish thought processes causes us to measure sins and feel what others have done is far worse than what we have done. That's childish. Because God is looking at you, you both need to die. Amen. That's all right. This is not maturity. A mature believer judges their own sin and does not give themselves passes or excuse others with no self-examination. A mature believer knows how to examine themselves, judge their own sin, and don't give themselves passes and accuse others. When we are truly mature, we pray for others, Amen. believing that we need prayer as well. Amen. Amen. The Bible tells you that when you go to them about their sin, be careful, yeah. lest you be consumed by it also. Because yeah. you ain't nobody. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Somebody think they somebody. I can't clap like that because I am somebody. Number three, man, maybe you can get these last three. What would that be, a D? That's passing. It's not, I didn't think so. I was trying to be, next time I'll have six. Are you wanting God to help you become who you want to be? 
or who he desires for you to be. That's the man. A mature believer wants to be what God wants no matter what it costs him. Amen. Immaturity make you try to use God to get what you want. Immature believers strive to be what they want and pray for God to do what they feel needs to be done in their lives. But as we mature, we begin to shrink in God's presence. Anybody ever shrunk in God's presence? Shrink in his presence and realize our minds are emotional, but his thoughts are eternal. <laughs> the longer we walk with God, the more we trust him with our future. After a while, we should die to our own desires and yield to his. It's maturity. Okay, maybe these next two. Maybe. Do you speak negatively about situations before they become bad? Oh, I will preach this one. That's, that's the one right there. You already speaking negative and you ain't giving it a chance yet. That's immaturity. This means you are preparing yourself to avoid hurt and trauma because of past trauma. So you ain't let go of the past yet. So you can't be mature. Your growth is stunted by your past. The more we mature, the more our tongue is conditioned to speak life instead of death. Amen. I know when I'm around a mature believer because they're like, well, man, yeah, God, they, they speak in life. Well, I mean, it ain't over, man. God can do anything. Man, I mean, it, it look bad, but man, God can fix Man, God can do that. That's a mature believer. Ain't around about it. Man, there ain't no way. There ain't no hope. Oh, no. Oh, no. Demon? Oh, no. Just speaking bad. But a mature believer can speak life in any situation. This looks bad, but I've seen God do greater. <laughs> he can do exceeding, abundantly, above all. We can ask or think. What are we talking about? I'm not worried about that situation. You keep watching the news, you gonna keep talking negative. Ain't no positivity on the news. They saved that one positive story for the end of the show. Well, look at Wilbur the pig. Oh, look at the pig. Man, I've never seen a pig jump that high. That's the positive story. The whole show, he died, he died, he caught it. He got monkey pox, he got cheetah pox. He got, I mean, everybody died, everybody's sick. Everybody, that the last one, ooh, look at little Wilbur. <laughs> yeah, and church folks sitting up there watching all that, and then they come in church scared of each other. Scared of the folks you love. Scared you might catch something and die. What you scared of death for if you're a Christian? The Bible said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. What are you afraid of? The more we mature, the more our tongue is conditioned to speak life instead of death. We overcome fear and doubt, trauma and past hurt. So we can make room for God to work in the situation. I'm going to read that again. We overcome fear and doubt, trauma and past hurt. That's why we come to church. Because we're overcoming fear and doubt, trauma and past hurt. That way we can make room for God to work in the situation. 
We no longer look for the bad. We are trusting God for the good. That's a mature belief. Okay, somebody just, if I don't get this last one, I'm not saying. <laughs> I have missed them all. Come on, number five. Come on, number five. Come on, number five. I need this. Need this one. Need this one. Keep me encouraged, Lord. Encourage myself. Is God around you or in you? Is God around you or in you? You saved because your mama saved you. You saved because your husband saved. Husband, are you saved because your wife is saved? Is God around you or in you? Are you saved when you are around saved people, but absent of faith when you are around the faithless? An immature believer can lose faith when they are challenged and be intimidated by the opinions of others. Maturity causes us to be strong in what we believe, no matter who's around. Amen. We don't have to be dogmatic about it. We got to be no Hebrew Israelite about it. I'd be dogmatic about it because we know what we know. I ain't got to be angry at you because I know what I know. Nothing you're going to say going to make me angry. You can't make me angry about my faith. You can attack the Bible. You can burn it. You can pull all the pages out of it. That's not going to make me angry because my faith ain't in that book you hold it. My faith is the one who holds my future. That's where my faith is. So unless you can do something to him, we don't have a problem. Christian just arguing. Man, no, man, the word said that you do I'm like, <laughs> Yes, you won. You won, brother. No, maturity causes us to be strong in what we believe no matter who's around. And we don't have to be dogmatic about it because we know what we know. We can lift our hands and praise God in the presence of our enemies. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We coming here, man. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm going to lift my hand. I don't care if my ashy elbow bump your head. You should have your hands up to block it. I'm going to give God a praise. Amen. I'm going to be like David. I'm going to dance. I don't care who's looking. Amen. Somebody like, yeah, boy, because I love to dance naked like David. <laughs> David did not dance naked. That is not in the Bible. It's a bad translation. It's not in the, David would never do that. He had a linen ephod on, two garments. Look, somebody like, I wrote a whole song about that. <laughs> yeah, what are you? Nope, look it up. Read the word. He did not dance naked. And his wife, Micah, Michael, what was her name? Saul's daughter, was mad at him because he reduced himself to a common person. And she said he exposed himself in front of them as but she was really meaning being common and not kingly. He took his kingly garments off, put his ephod on, and praised the Lord like everyone else around him. Then he even leveled the playing field. He gave everyone the same thing to show everyone we're all the same in the presence of the Lord. That's why God loved him so much. Somebody just wanted them to dance naked so they can be up in the club. 
Hey, man, I don't know who that was for. But that's the Bible. Go check it out. Our confidence in God has developed at this point when we can lift our hands and praise God in the presence of our enemies. Our confidence in God has developed into a full blown confession of faith that no man can alter. This is maturity. This is the level we all must strive for. Look at somebody and say, we must grow up. We must grow up. Everyone stand to your feet. We must, look at somebody and say, we must grow up. Second Peter 1 and 9. But he that lacketh these things that I just named are blind and cannot see afar off. When you can't see afar off, you got to contend with everything that comes your way. Yeah. Think about that. When you can see afar off, you can avoid certain things coming your way. The further you can see, the less you have to fight. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election, what? Sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall what? He just taught you how to never fall. Does the Bible lie? He said, if you do these things, you'll never fall. Amen. Somebody saying, I need help with these things. If that's you, just come on up. I want to make the list. I need one through five. I want a perfect score. I want a hundred. I want to grow up. Just more, Lord. More. There ain't no insult, man. Before God, we've all shrunken in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Boy, this was a powerful word today. I mean. It's a good word. Good word. Bless me. Mm. Mature in the faith. Don't matter. Doesn't matter how long you've been going to church. You know that doesn't count. Don't matter how long you've been saying you were saved. You have to be proactive to mature. To grow, you have to give yourself what it needs to grow. Just come on up. Yeah, those back there, just come on up. Man, they all around the corner. Oh, oh. We working on that. We working on it. Amen. Praise God. With your heads bowed, Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this word. Thank you for the richness of it, the importance of it, the relevance of it. Thank you, Lord, for telling us how you feel about us and how you want us to be. I pray, Father God, that this word, Father God, that was preached will be a landmark, will be a goal for all of us Lord, so we can mature in every one of these areas. No one pass this test today God no one in here because we all need at least one of these things so help us Father God as we pursue you to mature in all of these areas Lord help us Father God so that we can secure our footing plant our roots so that we will be able to stand in this last and evil day no matter what comes our way. No matter what our government does, no matter what the world leaders do, no matter what the scientists do, no matter what happens, God, we will be firmly planted and be able to stand mature enough to bear fruit, Lord. Even in this time of famine, spiritual famine, where churches are closing, where pastors are afraid to gather, where pastors are afraid to even Preach without a mask on. Father God, in this hour, help us, Lord, to be strong and stable. And never forget that you're our healer. 
never forget that it's your divine will that we gather. And if it's your divine will, your protection is with us. Help us, Father God. Help us, Lord, to mature in the faith so we can be strong until you return for us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And help us, Father God, sins that easily beset us, sins that easily find their way back in, sins that come through that open door, whatever it is. Father God, we pray right now that you would mature us past that. Help us to grow past that. Show us what's in our heart. Help us to yield to you in an area, whatever area it is, so that we can live for you consistently. Father God, and make you proud of us for doing it your way. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and hug somebody and say, I'm growing up. Come on, hug them and say, I'm a little older even now. This message growed me up. I'm maturing in the faith. Look at somebody say, I'm on my way to maturity in the faith. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Jay Bryant. Hallelujah.